Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm looking at uh, Bridge Builder and its uh, descendants, let's say. Now, Bridge Builder is basically you're trying to build a bridge across a gap here. These are the instructions. Look at the hardware requirements. 200 megahertz or faster CPU. I have something that is 10 times that speed easily, uh, 20 times that speed even. And uh, never mind the fact that I have way more memory than would ever be imagined reasonable in this era. So the point of this is you have to build a bridge. And if I just delete that, yeah, this is about the simplest bridge you can build. This is a beam bridge. And if I go to hit T to test, A turns on stress analysis. You see that's nice and green right now. If I run the train, you see how it went red for but a moment there? Let's uh, go to the next level and take a look at a slightly more complicated bridge here. Um, well, okay, so if I just take out this middle section, let's test the bridge. And I'll do it in slow mode. Ah! And you see that even touching the side of the screen is just going to destroy me. This is obviously running on a machine that is many times faster. Oh my goodness, the train fell into the gap. That is, oh, that is terrible. So we needed to reinforce that middle gap there. And as you see, what I did was I um, put a, one of these things up here, one of these here, and then connected this here. And so this, this bit here will be under tension. So that means that there will be compressive forces running down these and eventually down these. And that should support the middle here. So if I test that and I put it in slow motion mode, not that it actually helps at all, then yeah, you see that some of the stress was passed off to these and the bridge stayed stayed okay. Now, this is a very old game. The, uh, the creator, Alex Austin, actually has posted a newer version. Now, bridge building game is more recent. In fact, it's more recent than some of the other games in the list. It's, again, by Alex Austin, Cryptic C, and you can get it free from his website. So just going to take one of these levels and take a look at it. Yeah, you see, I've already been building this. It's pretty much the same game as before with many improvements to make it run relatively well on modern hardware. Let's uh, run the train and see how it goes. Look at that. Lots of stress in there, but this is essentially the same game. Totally free. It's all still in 2D. It's from his website, crypticsea.com. So the next kind of evolution uh, is Pontifex. Now Pontifex was uh, released like a year later after the original bridge uh, builder. It changed its name because they were because there was some complaints from another company that made a product called Bridge Builder, which also used physics and stuff to actually simulate bridges, but it was aimed more at students, right? So uh, they changed the name to Pontifex, which is Latin for you know bridge building, I guess. And uh, they also added a few things. First of all, as you can see, it's all in 3D now. You can have multiple, you know, there's a whole complex building menu where you can have multiple planes and things like that. Uh, in normal mode, it's much simpler, obviously. you can. It's still essentially a 2D game. You have different materials here. You have cables now. So cables do not work under tension, uh, do not work under compression, but they work well under tension and they're really cheap. So what I'm doing is building a cable stayed bridge here, uh, like that. Uh, just do some of these. And then I'm going to cable stay this and this. And since I need extra cables here, and uh, we got this. So we have like a minimal cable stayed bridge. Let's see what happens. Ooh, it doesn't look too good. Let's take a look at the stress. Let's run the train. Oh, the whole thing collapsed. Well, how do I improve on this? Well, the way I improve is I use heavy steel instead of light steel. Deliberate mistake detected, right? So let's put the heavy steel in here. Much stronger, much more capable of supporting the rigors of uh, the stresses put on it by the train. Let's test. Ooh, much better. Let's run the train. And it goes across just fine. Now, you notice now it goes in multiple directions because previously you could have a bridge collapse but the train would make it over. Uh, in this case now it had to go in multiple directions so that you couldn't get away with that. So the obvious sequel to Pontifex was, well, Pontifex 2. But uh, they later decided to change the name to Bridge Construction Set and they also won a whole bunch of awards. This was released in 2002. Again, it's Chronic Logic, which was is a Alex Austin's company, although I'm not sure how much he was involved in these later ones. Now, they added proper three-dimensionalness to things, so let's uh, edit this bridge. Now, 
Now you can actually rotate the camera and stuff like this. Let's just try building a very basic bridge. Oh, let's actually do it in normal mode for now. Let's just try building a very, very simple bridge. Now you'll notice that if you drag things along at ground level, it'll automatically fill in the deck. If you drag them up and down like this, then uh, it generates girders instead. Now let's uh, move the camera around. There we go. Zip, zip, zip. And that is a very simple box girder bridge. Let's simulate it. Ooh, a lot of stress up here. Let's run the test and see how it looks. Ah, it looks, works just fine. So, but I can look at this stress diagram and say, hey, you know, all the stress is along the top here, right? And in these. But these ones aren't taking nearly as so much stress, so maybe I can save some money by getting rid of these diagonal cross members in some of these places, right? So let's go to edit and actually do that. What you can do is go into complex mode, turn off cross beams, and then what we're going to do is just take out these ones, because these are the ones that showed very little stress. I need at least one set of um, cross members of these diagonals, because the otherwise the whole thing will fall over. Let's try filling these in. So I, what I've done is I've seen where there's the least amount of stress and thought maybe I can save a bit of money there. Uh, famous last words, right? So yeah, these things are now running, suffering for a little more stress, but I think they'll still be able to support the weight of these cars. You see? Beautiful! You see that? Just all about the economy here. So that's a cost of 5,809, but you know what? There's a few other tricks you can use to actually make it even cheaper and leaner and save budget, right? So one of the things you can do in complex mode is you can have decks that slope, which means that I can do a bridge that actually goes up and across, which is very helpful because it means that some of the force going down is being uh, pushed sideways. It's gonna help a great deal in uh, spreading the load. So let's actually try and build this out uh, into something that makes sense. Or, or something that's more minimal. So I'm just trying to remember the best way to do this. What I want to do is try to use... Over the top I want to have steel instead, right? So here we go like this. And there, look at that, taking off the symmetry. Ooh, and is that a good one? You know what, I'm going to just do this. This and this. So that steel is stronger, that should hopefully handle the loads a little better. And now we'll just put some iron in here, and then iron here, iron here, and iron here. Let's see how strong this is. So this cost, this is slightly cheaper than the other one. Let's see if it actually stands or collapses. Ooh, there's a lot of stress on this thing, but let's run the test. Oh, beautiful, look at that. And in fact, of course, looking at this bridge, I can see that really there's not a huge amount of stress on these uh, diagonal members, so I can take those out, right? So let's go back to edit, and of course nuke these, nuke these, and then rebuild them without the cross beams in iron. And once again here, and then simulate it. Let's see how this works. Brilliant, you see? So by using the stress diagrams and all these fancy new materials, I've managed to make an even cheaper and more efficient bridge. Okay, so kind of the next step in the... You know, I'm not saying it's really a series because they're all made, they're all released by the same publisher, but they're all by kind of different programmers as I understand it. So yeah, the, this is a bridge it, and you can get it as a demo on Steam. This is all I have because I've got the other games. Now, so this is a suspension bridge. A suspension bridge consists of two towers uh, between which um, a cable is suspended. So here we go, we're going to do that and then we're going to suspend, a, do a suspension cable like this which will, you know, brace the load in this direction and then it'll brace the load in this direction. So what you do is you want to give it roughly the same curve on each side. Uh, neither of these ones are... Be oh, wait a second. That would be it. There, that's the same one. And then before we put the cable across the middle, we'll build the roadway. Now, we're going to build the roadway with a lot more little steps here. So, with a suspension bridge, the road is essentially suspended by vertical cables hung from a much heavier cable above. 
And obviously, I mean, I, I, I live in the Bay Area. There are quite a few famous suspension bridges. The Golden Gate Bridge is probably the most famous suspension bridge in the world, but it's certainly not the biggest anymore, but it is one of the the best, if you ask me. Uh, when it was built, they had to do all the calculations for the force and everything by hand. And, you know, the guy that ultimately did it was fired and never got credit until like 70 years later. It was a real kind of shame. But, uh, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge is an icon. So, yeah, this uh, cable actually handles most of the load and it is allowed to sag according to gravity. Oh, you know what I need is this to stop this thing going inwards. So that will provide some extra constraints here. Let's try simulating it. Ooh, I don't know about that. That looks like the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, if you ask me. Let's let's run the simulation. <laughs> here come the cars. Let's simulate them a little faster. Here we go. Whoa, he's gonna have fun crossing this bridge. <laughs> whoa, oh, look, he almost yeah, he had a crash there. But that was a successful test, if you ask me. <laughs> now, uh, if you go, Bridget actually has an interesting one. Now, uh, Pontifex 2 actually included drawbridges, but this is, uh, it wasn't in the demo. So here's an actual drawbridge with uh, words. And this is a demo, so it's very, very, very simple. What you have to do is do that, and then you need a brake joint the right there, the and, and build, to the bridge. Select there we go, the menu. oh, we need to build outwards here, and this is very kind of simple, so it's just basically a box truss kind of bridge. And then you put in the hydraulics in the four the locations here. And the guy is helpfully telling me to how to do all this, but I don't need to know because I've done this several times. We need to make sure... Yeah, we've already done that. Oh, we're missing, we're missing iron girders there. Hold on. Come on, put some iron girders right there. That's great. A drawbridge also needs a brake joint where the bridge splits when it raises. The brake joint, you see? Is that there? There, it's all yellow now, and now we can simulate it. Press the play button and watch the test. Let's watch the test. Once Actually, the test is complete, <laughs> press next level to continue. There, are the cars going, and there's the bridge opening. Beautiful. The whole thing opens up, and the the ship travels through safely. Of course, you see, I can come back, right? I can go back. And I can say, let's. What happens if we take out that brake joint, right? Imagine we built a suspension or a a one of these drawbridges, and we never included the ability for the thing to actually split in the middle. How entertaining would that be? Let's watch. Oh, bang! The whole thing disintegrates. <laughs> let's move it a little faster. And here comes the boat. Doesn't care. Knocks everything else down. <laughs> And then the cars drive in. Oh, look, these things are still working. Pretty awesome. And then the cars go in. Yes. One of the best things about bridge building games is basically watching failures. Now, you can construct some pretty amazing things. You can construct trebuchets and uh, other stuff. But really, uh, you know, they are physics games. And they're pretty entertaining for that purpose. If, you're, if you like Kerbal Space Program and you haven't played one of these, you should definitely look it up. Cr uh, Chronic Logic, they actually sell most of these from their site. Some of them are available on Steam, and then right now, yeah, there is another, I think it's called Bridge Project, is part of the current Humble Bundle, so it's worth looking at, although you have to realise that many of these things are direct descendants from Alex Austin's original Bridge Builder back in 2000, and, you know, they are excellent games to muck around with. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.